Cost Accounting 17 under and over allocated overhead. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, where we upload the videos. And you'll see a reference uh, for cost accounting and managerial emphasis, this textbook. And Chapter 4 is where we get some of the concepts for this video. So let's review about overhead first of all. Overhead is an indirect cost that we can't directly assign to a product. So as a result, these costs are allocated based on a predetermined overhead rate. They can't be a direct cost, considered a direct cost, because they cannot be directly tied to the product, like direct labor or direct materials. So if you're Levi Strauss paying people to run a sewing machine, that's direct labor. If you're going out and buying denim to use in pairs of jeans, that's direct material. The result is, is that since the overhead rate is predetermined, quote unquote, which means in the planning or budgeting process, we come up with a predetermined rate that we expect to use overhead. It's only an estimate because we do it at the beginning of the budgeting or planning process, not during the year. Overhead costs allocated may differ from actual overhead costs, and I always refer to that as the check that we write. So while we may think we need to allocate $5 per pair of jeans for overhead, the actual check we write may be for more than that. And then to define under and over allocated, under allocated means too little cost. The check we wrote is higher than what we allocated. Over allocated means too much cost allocated. The check we wrote is actually lower than what we allocated. This next part of the presentation you'll see a similar uh, layout when you watch the process costing video that I have, and that's the T account activity. And I put a note here that all of these accounts are subcategories of inventory, which is an asset account. These are all subcategories. And the accounts labeled control, there's three of them, are temporary accounts that do not make it to the financial statements. They're temporary holding buckets to account for cost. So let's talk about the flow. You'll see that we have debit beginning and debit amounts for direct labor control, direct material control might be denim for blue jeans, and overhead control. And you see that for overhead we have two separate accounts. We have the control account, which is the check we wrote for the actual expenses. But we have a separate account where we handle the allocation of overhead, and that's the next thing I'll talk about. So from these accounts, we allocate into work in process. We have a beginning balance for work in process or WIP. We credit the labor control account. It goes to work in process debit. We credit the direct material goes into work in process as a debit and we credit overhead allocated which goes into work in process as a debit so you'll note that we credit to allocate but that credit for overhead comes out of overhead allocated it doesn't come out of overhead control and we'll see a minute when we get to a journal entry why that is once these costs are in work in process you can imagine partially completed jeans on the floor of the factory they, we then credit to reduce work in process and send those dollars, in this case $1,100, to finished goods. Finished goods has a beginning balance. Dollars come in from work in process, costs, and an ending balance. And then we take them out of finished goods when we actually sell them to somebody and they become cost of sales. So we credit to reduce finished goods. We debit cost of sales to increase it. So you'll see in all of these accounts that we have beginning and ending balances. And the question is, how do we account for the under-applied overhead? We wrote a check for 750. We actually allocated 700, which was too little. And the difference between those two numbers is $50. We have $50 more that we should have allocated based on the check we wrote. How do we account for it? There are three approaches. Well, one approach is the adjusted allocation approach, which says let's just restate all of our overhead entries at actual cost. 
So what that means practically is we would simply change that overhead allocated number that went into work in process. We would change that number in blue from 700 to 750 to reflect the check that we wrote. Pretty simple. Why would you use this method? Well, there's timeliness and there's also cre it also creates some accuracy at the end of the period because we're applying costs using the direct, the actual dollars. We applied 750, we wrote a check for 750. So it's clean and it's fairly simple. A little more involved approach is proration approach where we spread the difference, in this case $50, among the ending balances for work in process, finished goods, and cost of sales. If you'll remember up here, <coughs> excuse me, all of these accounts had end, beginning and ending balances. And so since we're not exactly sure where every individual dollar of overhead went in this process, for example, we don't know if a specific pair of jeans is partially completed sitting there boxed up ready to be sold or actually sold so the easiest way to allocate that cost according to proration is to spread the difference among the ending balances and the question is how much of that seven hundred dollar overhead was in each account balance of that seven hundred dollars that we allocated how much of it is in each of these three accounts well we allocate it based on balances. So we've got beginning balances here. We put our balances here. Let's just assume, because I didn't list the detail, that the overhead included in work in process at this point was 200 finished goods 150, cost of sales 50. I'm just making the numbers up. So it says the percentage overhead included is 50% of the total 400, 37% of the total 400, 12.5% of the total 400. So those percentages add up to 1. So now that we know the, how the overhead as a percentage remains in these three accounts, we can now take the $50 that were short, that we should have allocated and didn't, and allocate it based on those same percentages. So 50% of the $50, $25 goes to work in process. 37% of the $50 goes into finished goods. 12.5% of the 50 or 6.25 goes to cost of sales. Then we look at the account balance after we've prorated it and we see it's 100 plus 25 is, 120, is 1,025. 1,000 excuse me, plus 25 is 1,025. So we're adding across. And we see that we started with a balance of 2,400. We prorated the 50, so the ending balance in total for all the accounts is 2,450. The journal entry we make to allocate those dollars is we take the three accounts and the amounts that we increase them by. Then, and this is where we get to the journal entry, the T accounts, overhead allocated would be debited to be reduced to zero, so we debit overhead allocated. The control account starts with a debit, we would credit it to bring it to zero. There's my credit. And so now we have debits, we have increased the cost to account for the $50 that we missed the first time through. The simplest method is just to take the $50 and write it off to cost of sales, that is to say, expense it. Cost of sales debit, again we reduce the allocated account to zero by debiting, we reduce the overhead control account to zero by crediting, and now we've posted that missing $50 to cost of sales which is the simplest approach, maybe less exact, but the simplest approach. That's the end of Accounting 17A. Not on the web videos or additional videos and web spreadsheets, not on YouTube where we re-record and add data so that we group 
all of our concepts by type which makes it easier for students that's on our website YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL you can email me for a complete list of videos on YouTube group by topic for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions stltest.net is the website here's the email address and the phone number thanks very much and we'll see you next time